All right, hello, my good friends, and welcome back to the Cozy Representative, the worst YouTube channel of all time. I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's someone worse than me. Um, how you doing? It's good to see you again. So, I hope you all are doing well. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, look at what we got going on here. I'm trying to spruce up my life a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, so today, um, we're talking about some more band beef <laughs> and this is an interesting one uh an ancient beef between Fall Out Boy and the Killers that was you know made some headlines back in the day and this is way back this is like 2005 2006 and I feel like this one's kind of a little bit more rare it's not th this one's like it's it wasn't really that big of a deal in in my opinion it was some words back and forth in some magazines of course publications at the time took it and ran with it and there are all these articles i think there's some other youtube videos or podcasts that people have made recently about it uh but i was recently i had actually completely forgot about this i didn't even really know about this like Fall Out Boy the Killers beef at the time. I had kind of heard stuff about it, but I had never really gone down the rabbit hole. Um, it wasn't until I was reading, I stumbled upon some articles about it recently and I just thought it was so, I thought certain aspects of it were so funny and interesting and of the time. And there's also just like some other like nuggets of information from it that I just thought were important and interesting and would be cool to talk about in a video. I have some thoughts and opinions on it. And of course, there's some great Pete Wentz quotes. And it actually inspired a song that ended up becoming a big hit for Fall Out Boy. We'll get into all that. Before we get into things, uh, I do want to give a shout out and a thank you to these lovely people whose names you're seeing on the screen. Uh, these people support this YouTube channel over on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash the cozy representative really helps out the channel. I'm a small DIY channel, you know what I'm saying? And a little help goes a long way. There's a, there's a ser little exclusive video podcast series I do on there called Cozy's Basement. Um, and it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just a mishmash of things, but if you like this channel and you like what I talk about on here and you want a little bit more of it and a little bit less scripted, um, uh, you can head over there and get some episodes of an exclusive series. Uh, it's either $5 a month or $10 a month. Take your pick. There's a link in the description. And thank you once again to these people on the screen and with that onwards to it. So this beef... <laughs> between the killers and Fall Out Boy. So this starts off in September of 2005, <laughs> which is how many years ago is that now? 18? Wow. 17. Around there. I'm bad at math. A long time ago. I remember 2005. I bought From Under the Cork Tree in 2005. Okay, anyway. So, Brandon Flowers... <laughs> <laughs> the guy from The Killers did an interview with NME, which is a, a UK music publication, I believe, right? Is Brandon Flowers Mormon? Is that right? That's a thing about him, right? And Brendan Urie of Panic at the Disco, who does show up in this whole debacle, also a Vegas band. He grew up Mormon, too. Is there like a Mormon thing in Vegas? I don't know. Anyway, so apparently earlier in 2005, uh, the, <laughs> the Killers had a whole separate beef with the band The Bravery, which that is an, an, that's a name I haven't heard in a million years, right? The Bravery. According to this NME article, uh, Brandon Flowers' prior beef with The Bravery earlier that year was because they shared the same A&R person, which is an artist and repertoire uh, some sort of band management person. Um, the, the killers and the bravery had the same A&R guy and Brandon Flowers uh, didn't like that. Cause I guess he was spending too much time on the bravery, but like, it's funny who got the last laugh in the end, right? Can you name a single song by the bravery? I can't, 
I mean, maybe that just, I mean, I, I remember a lot of 2000s, like, big rock band hits. I don't remember, I can't name a song by The Bravery. I'm guessing they sound kind of like The Fray or something. That's what I imagine from the name. But, yeah, anyway, so that's kind of funny, because, like, who fucking gives a shit about The Bravery? But anyway, <laughs> so he was salty that their A&R guy was spending too much time with The Bravery, um... To which he added, quote, Now he's just signed Fallout Boy, which means more of his attention will go to them that should have gone to the killers. Again, okay, so no, you know what? It starts out with Brandon Flowers being a drama queen, because should have gone to the killers. The killers were huge. Like, <laughs> the killers were, again, way more gigantic than the bravery. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, who cares? Like, your A&R guy is spending more time with the... Bi well, just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> just write the best songs you can brand brandon flowers you know what i'm saying everything else will fall into the place again you got you got the last laugh at the end of the at the end of the day because i can i can I, I, you know what i'm saying uh, everyone knows the killers i can't even remember what the bravery sounds like anyway so that's a little petty but so now now fallout boy is managed by their a and r and you know Brandon Flowers, it sounds like you should just get an A&R guy. You should just hire your own A&R guy. So your A&R guy doesn't have to share you with anybody else. So Pete Wentz responds. That same month in September 2005, and I'm actually going to read some of this MTV article that was uh, posted about Pete Wentz's response to this because... I, I don't know. I thought this, like, uh, on this channel, I like to document a lot of this stuff you know, publications and old internet from the 2000s, and I just like the way, the way this is written gives a good idea of where we were at culturally at the time, if that makes sense. I don't know. So it's called, uh, this is an article, September 26th, 2005 on MTV.com. It's called, The Killers Get More Beef, This Time with Fallout Boy. Fallout bassist Pete Wentz throws down in online posts. This article is by James Montgomery. With the state of rock and roll being what it is today, anyone with free time, a wireless connection, and a penchant for writing long-winded and dubiously punctuated internet diatribes can spark up a full-fledged band-on-band conflict in a matter of hours, as is the case with the latest rock feud between scrappy punk underdogs Fall Out Boy and double platinum synth rockers The Killers. So again, just to... Just to just to put a little context into this, this is September of 2005. Sugar We're Going Down had, like, just blown up. Just. You know what I'm saying? No one had any idea what emo, the legacy of that was going to be, or that there was going to be any legacy at all to a band like Fall Out Boy. They could have just been a one-hit wonder at that point, who were going to fall off the face of the earth. And The Killers were also a newer band, but they had they had scored a hit a year before, and they were double platinum, you know? So they were way bigger. And Fall Out Boy was this new, you know what I'm saying? And Brandon Flowers is all, we got to share our A&R guy. <laughs> As if that's really going to knock any wind out of your double platinum ass sales, Brandon Flowers. It all started last Wednesday when Fall Out Boy bassist Pete Wentz made a passing remark about the killers in his journal on the band's official site, FallOutBoyRock.com, which I used to frequent all the time and go on the forums of back in the day. That's an aside. Uh, <laughs> writing, and this is Pete's quote, It's funny the way you talk about sharing an A&R guy like it matters. Thank you, Pete, right? Like it fucking matters. Apparently referring to a secondhand comment he'd heard about Rob Stevenson, the Island Records A&R executive the two bands do in fact share. Neither Stevenson nor a Fall Out Boy representative would clarify the issue or comment on the matter at all. Pete quote, it's too bad you wrote a couple of good songs, otherwise it'd be that much easier to write you off. Wentz then signed the post as Mr. Brightsides. Emo punk message boards across the internet nation <laughs> picked up on the posting, which with many speculating that the reason Wentz lashed out at the killers was because they had complained to Stevenson that ever since Fall Out Boy had taken off, the Las Vegas Quartet had been all but forgotten by their label Island Records. So here's where Panic at the Disco get dragged into this. Fellow Las Vegas band and possible Mormon. Possible fellow Mormon. I, they didn't interject into this Pete. 
Pete, who is their label <laughs> owner, the guy who signed them, kind of unwillingly brought them into this too, as he took to the internet uh, in a post on fueledbyramen.com, uh, which was, you know, the Fall Out Boy, the label that signed Fall Out Boy initially. Pete had a blog on fueledbyramen.com as well. And around this time, Fall Out Boy were about to headline the Nintendo Fusion Tour in 2005, which was, I believe, Fall Out Boy's maybe their first headlining tour? Or no, not their first headlining tour, their first arena tour, I think. I'd have to double check that. But either way, Pete brought Panic at the Disco on as support. And, you know, speaking of all this, he says, I hope none of the other... And so he's talking about Panic at the Disco. I hope none of the other... Las Vegas bands get jealous that there is another gem out in the middle of the desert, Wentz wrote, fucking wasting my time on flowers. <laughs> so Pete's pissed that Brandon Flowers is pissed that they're fucking sharing the same A&R guy. And he's like, I hope you motherfuckers, you know, guess what? There's another Vegas band out there and I'm just wasting my time. So Pete's salty. And you know what? I get it. I like that. I like that, Pete. You know what I'm saying? He's not afraid to, you know, he's like, hey, you got a problem? Well, guess what? I got a Vegas band too. Watch out for him. And, you know, he really wasn't talking out of his ass because like Panic at the Disco went platinum on their first record like a year later. Anyways, so uh, just like a couple weeks later, uh, then there's another MTV interview article on October 3rd of 2005, also by writer James Montgomery. Um, and this is from an article called, <laughs> I like this article title. Again, why I wanted to include these articles. Killers give details on new EP, or new LP rather, admit they kind of like Fall Out Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, uh, the Killers, uh, someone else from the Killers, their drummer Ronnie Venucci, who I've never heard of, uh, kind of <laughs> tries to downplay this a little bit, or not downplay, but like maybe cease, what do you call it, fan the flames a little bit. He's trying to, he's trying to simmer this shit down. This article states the following. An extended studio stay also means that the band, or more precisely frontman Brandon Flowers, will probably be able to avoid any further beef with artists on the Island Records roster. The group had a brief war of words with label mates The Bravery a few months back. Again, the bra I need to re-listen to The Bravery after I film this. <laughs> they're, they're probably great. Because <laughs> you guys know me. I fucking love The Fray now and like Maroon 5. I'd probably love The Bravery. I could just tell from the band name and like what i remember of them that it's got to be some like 2005 like mainstream piano rock right right like soft piano pop rock anyway i'll probably be coming at you with a video about the bravery next after i inevitably discover that i probably love them all right um uh, the group had a brief war of words with label mates The Bravery a few months back, and just last week there was another feud, this one between The Killers and recent island signees Fall Out Boy, and for Venucci, drummer of The Killers, a beef-free diet would be a very good thing. Quote, I mean, everybody's got an opinion, and if someone asks Brandon something, he's going to say it. We don't always agree with him, but that's his prerogative, he sighed. Oh, that Brandon Flower is always, <laughs> always going off. I think this falls along the same lines. I hadn't even heard about this thing with Fall Out Boy until a few days ago, and I still don't get it. We got nothing against those guys at all. And I kind of like that song they've got, Sugar We're Going Down. It's catchy. Again, that song they've got. They had one, you know, they had just, that's kind of funny. So the drummer's like, we're, we're, you know, it's all good. So that, <laughs> and that shows that like, and this is actually going to be proven in a second by something else that Pete writes, but I think Pete Wentz and Brandon Flowers are ambassadors for their, you know, they're kind of the ambassadors for their bands. They're the ones that go out and do the talking and also maybe the kind of the business guys, you know what I mean? So they might just be stirring shit up just to stir shit up, you know what I mean? They might just be like, they're just, you know... <laughs> They're repping their crew. <laughs> they want to hold it down and, um, you know, shoot, uh, spit some fucking venom at each other. But the drummer's like, I don't even know what's going on. I kind of like that fucking Sugar We're Going Down song. Anyway, so here's what happens next. 
Here's more, here's even more fun Pete Wentz isms from the time. Okay, yeah, so this is actually my favorite, like, segment of this. Uh, and this is how, this is why I remembered this whole beef in the first place and what inspired me to film this little video about it and document some of this and give you some of my thoughts was because I remembered a, a random fun fact about this whole thing that I remembered is that the original working title for This Ain't a Scene, It's an Arms Race by Fall Out Boy, you know, the lead single on 2007's Infinity on High. Great song. Holds up to this day. I don't... Anyway, I could go off on that. <laughs> For some reason, I was like laying in bed this past weekend, and I just like remembered that the working title for that song, just a random Fall Out Boy fun fact that I know, the working title for that song was You Can't Spell Star Without A and R. And this is all starting to make sense now, right? I forgot about the Killers thing. And I just remembered that, like, yeah, that was, like, the working title for that song. And I just thought of that title, You Can't Spell Star Without A&R. And I was like, that's a good, that's a good title. Like, I like that. So I Googled it just to see, like, am I, am I remembering that correctly? Like, what was the deal with that? And then... I came across this article that I'm about to read you from, and this is from October 7th of 2005. So this was... <laughs> so the drummer had just five days before this on the 3rd, four days before this on the 3rd, again, math, not my strongest suit, um, had just tried to downplay all this, and the month before that in September of 05, this all started. So this was all still fresh. So this time, Pete talks more about this and about his thoughts, and I like this a lot. So this next article, October 7, 2005, James Montgomery again, Fall Out Boy Killers Beef gives birth to a new song, Sugar Rockers Respond with You Can't Spell Star Without A&R. Pete Wentz is getting the final word once again, just days after the killer's Ronnie Venucci downplayed any burgeoning beef between his band and Fall Out Boy, the verbose and internet savvy Wentz, which I just want to say, Pete Wentz was like one of the first like internet savvy rockers, you know what I mean? Before Fall Out Boy, was there ever like a guy in a rock band before 2005 like a guy in a mainstream rock band that would be known as like internet savvy. You know what I mean? I don't think like the dude from Creed <laughs> was like updating his blog much. That was like a real, that was a cool revolutionary thing that like Pete Wentz and you know, all the Fueled by Ramen bands had going on. They like invented the internet. Soldier Boy may say that he invented the internet, but I think it was Pete Wentz low key. Anyways, the verbose and internet savvy Wentz posted an entry in his blog at fueledbyramen.com looking to get the absolute total 100% last say on the matter. Quote, there is no beef, just Satan. Uh, clever. Very clever, Pete. Ha ha ha. So funny I forgot to laugh. And that is kind of ahead of the curve. Satan obviously is the, you know, the vegan beef substitute, which... Again, of Pete being ahead of the curve, I mean, we all know... Uh, so, but Satan is, like, I never really started hearing about that in, like... Or, like, seeing that in restaurants or knowing what that is until, like, 2016 or so. Me, personally, as just a food eater in America. Like, I didn't know what the fuck Satan was. Like, definitely not in 2005. I was really young then. But, like, Fall Out Boy... We're on the fucking vegan straight edge hardcore tip in the 90s, you know, way before being vegan was like this thing that you could kind of do and, <laughs> you know, more widely, you know what I mean? So like, I don't know, even just knowing about Satan and knowing about vegan food is, uh, I don't know, kind of ahead of the curve there too. But anyway, and kind of a, I guess, a clever quote. So funny, I forgot to laugh. There is no beef, just, just Satan. Uh, just getting rattled over nothing, he wrote. Just too, this is important, just too much makeup and no hearts. Just egos on the sleeves over here in Fall Out Boy land. So he's kind of, he's saying, yeah, you know what? I was putting my ego forward. I like it, Pete. Thank you for, thank you for, 
and, you know, admitting that and being straight up that you were putting your ego on your sleeve. So to get to the bottom of, of all this, MTV News decided to go straight to Wentz for the scoop. Here's what Pete had to say. Well, at first, I was kind of bummed out by the whole thing because there are a lot of bands that talk bad about us. But when it's a band that actually writes good songs, it's a bum out because it's harder to overlook. Aw, okay. I hear you, Pete. I see what you're saying. That's sweet. And I thought it was kind of ridiculous because that band is like quadruple million platinum and to be jealous or to imply that you don't like sharing your a and r guy with an untalented band seemed kind of lame but i think both brandon flowers and i are alike because we both use too much hair product and run our mouths way more than our bands like so that's just a, gr a great quote. I mean, he's really cutting himself down to size. And I think he's got brand. I think he also realizes that, you know what? Me and Brandon Flowers are like similar. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> we're, we're not afraid to pop off. We're, 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 e we're both kind of egotistical and we both run our mouths and the hair product quote. I mean, it doesn't get much more 2005 Pete Wentz than that. So I, I like that. But just because the feud appears to be dead doesn't mean Wentz still can't give the corpse a couple of swift kicks. Seems he and Fallout frontman, I like in these old articles, <laughs> these MTV articles, they they abbreviate to Fallout something, like the Fallout frontman. It, it did that in another one. I, I don't see that anymore. I don't know. That's just a random thing. I think that's funny. It sounds funny. He and Fallout frontman Patrick Stump have been busy churning out songs for a new album, one, which would become Infinity on High two years later. One in particular managed to, manages to get in a not-so-subtle dig at Flowers, who started this whole flap, <laughs> this whole flap, by complaining in an interview that his band's A&R rep now focuses all his time on Fall Out Boy. It's a tune called You Can't Spell Star Without A&R. Pete Wentz says, It's about our A&R guy, Rob Stevenson, who's always getting caught in the middle of all the beefs between us and the killers and the bravery. <laughs> Wentz laughed. But it's more about everyone thinking they're the new Axl Rose, just running their mouths and living in this world where nothing is real. Like, it's really easy to write a couple of songs, but that doesn't mean you get to run your mouth. The only guy who can do that is Michael Jackson. <laughs> he wrote Thriller so he can say anything he wants. And then he goes on to say, bands should concentrate more on writing new songs and less about running their mouths. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so I, you know, regardless of the specifics of this beef, I do like the sentiment there um, in that, yeah, man, you can't spell star without A&R. Like you're, you know, you're not Axl Rose, you know, no matter who, like that, that even like the sentiment of like, like, that relates to people today, even, on, like, TikTok, not to sound like an old fucking man, these TikTokers these days, but just people in showbiz in general, and people kind of trying to be stars, or think of themselves as stars, or in bands, or on YouTube, or whatever the fuck, and they get a big ego, and, you know, they get that, like, rock star complex, where they just think they're the shit, and they can say whatever they want, and all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden it becomes like they're this thing and they can just do whatever the fuck they want and and they became a star because they're fucking special. But to me, you can't spell star without a and R. Is like, nah, like, you weren't a star, like, before somebody f discovered you and helped you build your career. You weren't a star before you know, a bunch of people became fans of you and, you know, were gracious enough to start supporting your career. You weren't a star, you know, uh, while XX and X Factor helped you get to where you are. You're a person who found yourself doing the right thing in the right time at the right place. And there was a certain amount of luck to it as well. You know, you're not, fu like, cut yourself down a notch. Like, that, I think, is what Pete was going for with the title of You Can't Spell Star Without a &R. That's at least what I get out of it. And I think that's real cool. And if you look at what eventually became of You Can't Spell Star, You Can't Spell Star Without a and uh, This Ain't a Scene, It's an Arms Race, I don't know how much the song might have lyrically changed between 
this Killer's Beef in 05 and its release in 07, but that song kind of became a real... To me, that song is less about beef and... You know, I don't really get any confrontation towards anyone specific, Brandon Flowers, from that song. But that song, to me, always kind of represented this thing of, like, you know, we, we're getting looked down upon for being this emo band and this emo scene that's, like, looked at as this fad right now, all these bands. But that's a song that kind of stand, you know, it's kind of like sticking up for yourself, sticking up for your band and your friends and what you're doing and, and you know, just kind of... <laughs> you know it, it's just a battle cry for their band it's like nah this ain't a scene this ain't a fad like this is a fucking arms race dude this is a war we're going out there and we're fucking killing it doesn't matter what you call us so maybe that's kind of what it morphed into i don't know this is just my i don't know if this is at this is just these are just my thoughts so i think that's pretty cool so that's like the part one of this this beef it seemed to have ended there at the time but there was a there get get ready there was a whole other thing a few months later <laughs> where uh brandon flowers kind of reignited this whole thing so in early 06 like spring of 06 the killers were on the cover of nme this all started with nme with brandon flowers talking about the a and r thing um so this was the killer's cover story on NME in spring of 06. So this all, this, everything that we just talked about, that was like September, October 05. Like six months later, the killers are on the cover of NME. And this is their quote on the cover. Emo is dangerous. I want to beat those bands to death. <laughs> so this isn't even about the A&R guy thing. And this is kind of like what I mentioned earlier. I just knocked a cup over with my foot. What I was talking about earlier, kind of, this is less of like an A, uh, you know, this isn't like an A&R guy thing. This is like more of, I would say, a pretentious music guy thing. The things they're saying about emo. I'll just read you the quotes um, from the killers from this enemy cover story, and then let's dissect. So, July 2006, that's when this magazine came out. Um, and from the killers' article in it, this is what they said quote, All those bands, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, they're only influenced by each other each other and blink 182 how can that be a good thing then brandon flowers says you don't realize what you could be getting yourselves into with fallout boy <laughs> right <laughs> for different reasons but like right you don't know what you're getting yourself into um <laughs> you don't realize what you could be getting yourselves into with fallout boy and what kind of impact it could have in a way that you don't really want warns brandon Culturally, if it gets as big as it is in America, it could change an entire generation of people growing up here. Emo, pop punk, whatever you want to call it, is dangerous. <laughs> we don't want to dislike anyone, and we've still never met Fall Out Boy, but there's a creature inside me that wants to beat all those bands to death. They just all go into the happy emo funnel, and everyone loves them without thinking. So... Here's my thoughts on this real quick, and then we'll we'll wrap this up soon. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, what Pete said about this. But I think, I don't think he literally means that, like, Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco are dangerous in the sense of, like, they carry guns or, <laughs> you know, they roam the streets. And I don't think that's what he means. I think that this is, like, a 2000s pretentious music guy take. And, again, I don't know if this is, like true what i'm about to say but this is my knowing like studying as many 2000s music guys on this channel as i have and being a music guy who grew up in the 2000s myself i kind of i feel like i know the way that they think at this point and being that the killers weren't an emo band and were kind of more on the side of that i mean they were right they were kind of more on that like the strokes like meet me in the bathroom like indie they weren't from new york but that kind of like real like kind of sleazy indie rock thing which a lot of the emo bands fucking wanted to be by the you know just the whole funny thing about that but you know they, the killers were like more of like a looked at as like a real band 
And again, as I've talked about in a lot of my videos, and as I mentioned earlier, like at this time, Fall Out Boy was very new, My Chemical Romance was very new, Panic at the Disco were super new, all this stuff was new, and Emo was still looked at as this, basically this stupid teenage fad that was, you know, gonna go away in a few years. And I think that what they, what they were basically alluding to I think that they were trying to say that like this stuff is dangerous because these bands are all influenced by each other. It's not culturally important. It's not like pushing music into anything new or interesting. It's all just the it's it's just this fad that these bands feed off of each other and it's this insular thing and it's closed-minded and it's not War, you know, worldly, right? That's the vibe I get, because in the quote, they say these bands are all influenced by each other in Blink-182, which is not true. Again, if you look at any other video on my channel about any of these bands, the, the, the influence, I will tell you, <laughs> I go into it a lot, that the influence that these bands had, it wasn't just that. Um, so I think that they were kind of just like, looking at emo as this dumb, you know, it's the way that, like, someone my age could look at, like, uh, hyper pop, right? Which is, like, a genre that I don't listen to. I don't understand it. Um, it's, like, a new thing that, like, I don't know, or, like, some sort of TikTok music, right? I could just be, like, well, it's dangerous. It's all only influenced by each other. It's not, it doesn't come from the real shit that I listen to, you know? It's like a pretentious music guy opinion, which, as we see in the long run, looking back now almost 20 years later, you know, we see now that emo was, was a lot more culturally rich than that and did push culture into new territory in, in a way more worldly way than... A pretentious indie rock guy probably would have thought in 2005 you know what i mean so it's funny because none of this turned out to be true it wasn't it, if anything emo was it was good for like rock music at the time it was the last real big wave of rock music before rock kind of you know disappeared from the radio or like guitar bands or whatever around 2011 or so you know what i mean it was the last big like hair metal grunge, emo, you know what I mean? But pretentious, real indie rock music guys weren't having it at the time. It was a stupid teenage fad. Also, they could have been talking about, you know, the guys in The Killers, it's dangerous. Like, yeah, there is uh, sort of a problem uh, with emo, both at the time and now, about, you know, the music is very self-deprecating and it appeals to kids, but it embraces depression maybe it glamorizes depression they could have been hinting at that whole aspect of it but they didn't really say that i i think they were just being like pretentious music guys you know what i mean um but a pretty funny quote and a pretty funny magazine cover right so anyways <laughs> pete responded to this and panic at the disco responded to this too. I'm going to read you what they said and then I'm going to get the fuck out of your hair. So, and these quotes I actually got from a Tumblr account called Pretty Odd Fever, which if you're deep in the cut with Panic at the Disco lore, you definitely know this Tumblr account. I've <laughs> utilized this account before in videos I've made about Panic at the Disco. Shout out to Pretty Odd Fever, whoever you are. Um, Pretty Odd Fever uh, has a post about this whole thing and, and compiled some magazine quotes uh, from Panic! at the Disco. So I don't know what magazines these are from, um, but these are of the time Panic! at the Disco magazine quotes from a post by Pretty Odd Fever on Tumblr.com. So this is what Brendan Urie had to say in response to uh, the killers saying that emo is dangerous. Brendan Urie says, I think that's probably the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life. I think that's stupid. We're probably the most innocent, least threatening people that I know. That's funny, I think. I'll agree with them. Sure, I'm dangerous. We're really harmless and innocent in the way. It's a shame that he, Brandon Flowers, feels that way. So I think that's funny because Brendan... <laughs> 
Brendan, like, again, I think they were being pretentious music guys and we're talking about, like, you know, fucking music. <laughs> but Brendan took it literally and kind of thought Brandon Flowers meant that they, like, are, like, physically dangerous or something, which, again, I don't think that's what they meant. But <laughs> that's, like, very... I view. I think of Brendan Urie as a very, like, kind of a... He seems like a sweet guy, but also kind of... I don't know if vapid is the word like almost like like I don't think there's a lot of depth going on in like his brain <laughs> like he's kind of just this happy-go-lucky guy but like kind of head empty so that's a very head empty response from him just to like assume that like Brandon Flowers just meant that you guys have like guns or something I don't know um and where we're gonna end this off is Pete Wentz's response to that emo is dangerous the killer's quote here's what pete wentz had to say honestly i like brandon a lot <laughs> this might be my favorite part of it how pete kind of ends this whole thing off because now pete you can tell pete like doesn't care anymore and <laughs> you know he's kind of like you know he, he he might have like a several hundred thousand dollars more in his bank account at this point Point than he did when he was first popping off on fueledbyramen.com he's moved on um so now he's kind of taking the high road and he says honestly i like brandon a lot from what i've read in interviews he's sharp <laughs> now pete is kind of like sunning you know uh brandon flowers or what's the term like good you're you know you're a you're a good kid he's sharp i don't think people would take as much notice if he wasn't i respect that <laughs> I kind of like how we called Fallout Boy dangerous. I kind of think of it this way. How can you feel like a superhero if you didn't have an arch nemesis? Bam. That's how Pete fucking <laughs> ended this off. And that's a total boss quote at the end. You know, Brandon Flowers being like, you know, emo, whatever, it's dangerous, all these bands, you know, I just want to beat them up. And Pete's like... I kind of like the cut of his jib there. You know, I like how he called us dangerous. <laughs> you know, because Pete was probably like, you know what? You know, because Fall Out Boy loves hip hop. Fall Out Boy, you know, very much came from like, you know, Pete loves hip hop. Fall Out Boy has been very hip hop infused throughout the years. So he probably thought that was cool. Like he probably was like, yeah, like we're fucking dangerous. That's right. You're, you're sharp, kid, Brandon Flower. You know what I mean? I don't know. I thought that was a really boss way to end this whole feud. So anyways, that as far as I know is the extent of it. There might be more out there, but that was like the most interesting stuff that I could find. And um, yeah, I don't know. Kind of fun, guys. Kind of fun. So I'm going to cut it off there. I love you hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm really trying to post more stuff and kind of get back into the YouTube game more. I know it's been quite a slow year over here on the Cozy Representative. I kind of talked about it in the beginning of one of my Metro Station video videos a couple months ago, but... Um, just, you know, my life, there's been a lot of changes in my life this year. There's other things in life that I'm focusing on besides the YouTube channel. I'm, uh, you know, I don't know, th things like that. Just getting my personal life in order and whatnot. And uh, the YouTube channel this year has taken more of like, it's been more of a part-time thing for me as opposed to something that I'm really swinging for the fences with. And at this point, like, this channel is really just more of a fun art project for me than like anything else. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking, depending on how this video turns out, I might do just cause it's more, my schedule is busier more these days too. Now, um, I do have like a day job and everything and you know, just more life stuff going on. So I might do more videos like this where it's kind of just like unscripted, no frills, just me talking and I'll pick fun I don't know, topics to, I, I never liked doing videos like this before. Cause I always felt like it was like phoning it in. Cause whenever I do one of my big documentaries, it's like, I put all this work into it and it feels like this big thing. But at this point, I feel like it might make more sense to still do those videos and have that be a thing that I do, but also just to keep more videos coming out and just to be more chill with the channel in general, just you know, do more stuff like this. That's kind of just more fun. I don't know. I'm just kind of like trying shit out. I don't know guys, but, uh, thank you 
seriously to all you who watch and support and everything. Um, it really means the world. And uh, yeah, love you guys. It's been your man, Cozy. And uh, with that, signing off for the night. Have a good night, y'all. Love you. See you.